this video is to assist students with a further explanation of conditional statements. So it's the sort of case where we have P, the antecedent, and it implies the consequent Q. And sometimes, um, as well as called the antecedent, P is sometimes called the hypothesis, and Q, the consequent, is sometimes called the conclusion. And the result of P implies Q is called the statement. Um, the, the way of thinking does need a bit of familiarization at first. So it's, it's not unusual for students to find it a bit strange initially, but they certainly get used to it. From an earlier video, you may have seen P, the statement Z has a phone, and Q, Z will call his dad. And we looked at that quickly, and I said that we would have a closer explanation of the results of P implies Q. So we can start by putting in a truth table for P, and now for Q. So the, all the possible options are true, false, true, false for Q, given those values there for P. And the P implies Q. Now, let's look at it this way. It's a bit like... Um, Who, did anyone lie? It's it's one way of thinking about it anyway. So, if if we make a compound statement out of P and Q, it would be an if-then statement. You might remember from the previous video, and it would be if Z had a phone, then Z will call his dad. So, with the first case in the first row there, Z had a phone and Z called his dad. So that would be true. Okay, that's naturally linking those two statements together quite naturally, and that's true. The next one is Z had a phone, and <coughs> Z did not call his dad. Well, that's like a lie. It's there's, there's something clearly wrong with that. It's not how it should have been, because remember the compound statement says if Z has a phone, then Z will call his dad. Z did have a phone, he did not call his dad, so we give that the value false. And that's a special value, as you'll see in a minute. Now, counterintuitively, we've got the next situation which needs to be noted. Z did not have a phone. And Z did call his dad wonder if you can pause the video and guess what will go there. Now that you've unpaused the video, what goes here? Did it, was it true or false? So Z has a phone, sorry, Z does not have a phone, false, yet Z called his dad. It actually has the value true, which seems counterintuitive initially. But just because Z didn't have a phone doesn't mean he can't call his dad. That's not consistent with the initial compound statement. So even if the hypothesis is false and the conclusion is true, it still gets a true value. Or in other words, if the antecedent is false and the consequent is true, it can still have a true value. The last one um, needs a little bit of explanation as well. Zed didn't have a phone. Zed did not call his dad. Well, that is still gets a value of true because there's been no lies there. Because remember, the initial uh, compound statement was if Z has a phone then Z will call his dad. Well Z did not have a phone and Z did not call his dad so that gets a value of true. So if you're listening quickly I'll run through a few other so-called real life examples which might illustrate that. Um, as part from Z being P and Q just above there, what about uh, another one using the if-then structure and running through the same truth table? Um, what about this one? If you get an A for specialist maths, then I will give you $100. Let's see that. And by the way, the money does not exist, okay? That is just purely imaginary, okay? So don't expect $100 from Mr. Herbert. But pretending if, if, we, if you get an A for specialist maths in year 10 and I give you $100, um, let's run through that. So the first one there, first row, is you get an A for specialist maths, I'll give you a hundred dollars, that's clearly true. Second row, 
you get an eighth specialist maths and I don't give you $100. That is abhorrent. That's terrible. That's a lie. So that's a false. This one here, you don't get A for specialist maths, yet I give you $100. Well, that's okay. It's unexpected, perhaps, but I haven't told a lie. If you look at the initial premise, and you don't get an A, and you don't get $100 as consistent, so that gets a true. You could repeat it again for uh, if you have your dinner, you get to play outside tonight. Um, so you might say that to a bunch of younger children. Um, yep, the first one, you have dinner, you get to play out. That's true. You have your dinner, you don't get to play outside. Oh, no. Okay, that's... Um, that's be this shouldn't have been lied to. It's a terrible thing. Um, you don't um, have your dinner, but I still let you play outside. That that gets a true. Doesn't mean that the initial premise is lied. No dinner, no play outside is consistent. So that's true. Um, what about uh, one last one? If what about this premise? If I study hard, then I will pass. All right, I studied hard. I passed. That's true. I studied hard and I didn't pass. Oh no, I can't trust that anymore. That's that's false. That's almost like a lie. Um, I didn't study hard and I still passed. Well, it doesn't go against the initial premise. You, it it uh, it still gets a true. And the last one, I didn't study hard and I didn't pass. That's consistent. So hopefully they explain the conditional statements of P implies Q. Uh, using compound if-then structure.